Hi, this is Lindsay from The Homey Life and today I really wanted to just kind of do a garden tour and share what I have currently growing in my garden beds here in Queensland, Australia. It is summer right now over here and we are in the southern part of Queensland. So it is nice and warm. I did get my summer garden started a bit late. So I planted, I actually have it here, November 22nd. Yeah, November 22nd, a lot of these plants. So that was already pretty kind of light when you're going into the whole summer garden. So not everything is completely really big or producing yet, but I just wanted to show you now and I thought in another three weeks I'll do like another video update and we'll just see how everything has grown and what everything's kind of starting to look like. Hopefully it'll be raining today and that really helps to boost the garden. So let's just get started. So something I'm super excited about are these beautiful dwarf sunny sunflowers. I absolutely love them. I've always wanted to grow sunflowers, but never really have tried. But they are so beautiful. And yes, I have them here in my garden to try, see how I like them. And I'll definitely be growing these again. Over here, I have some coriander growing. And one of the calendulas, actually, that I used to have calendula here, um, grew just from seed. So I'm just going to leave it there and let it do its thing. Right behind it, I have some different melons growing. I've got apple cucumber. So that's just that right back there, slowly reaching up. Once it gets high enough, I will tie it to the trellis and help it climb up. And I've got two mouse melons, also known as quackamelons. So that's just right here. Two of those reaching up. Once I can kind of trellis it in, I will definitely be doing that as well. Along with our silver beet, or also known as chard. That has been going now for several months. I love chard because it can go pretty much like almost all year round before it dies. It just, it goes forever. It's a bit slower to get started, I find, but once it's going, it's definitely going. Next to my silver beet and chard, I have carrots. So we pretty much plant carrots all year round. Not because it's an expensive crop or anything like that. It doesn't like save us a heap of money, but the pure joy. My kids love pulling carrots out of the garden. It just brings them so much happiness and they just pull it out, get this beautiful big carrot wipe a little bit of dirt and they eat it and it's just you know it's just so cute it makes me really happy so I try to I have all season carrots that you could just grow all year round and that's currently what I'm growing right now so my kids just love pulling it out so I try to always keep a few of those going for them behind that we got some beefsteak tomatoes that are growing well so I planted a few seeds and then I just kept the stronger ones and I'll also help them trellis up. So I'm hoping for pretty much like some yellow kind of colors. Green, red. Another one of those is a cucumber apple. So that one's a cucumber apple. And that's just a normal cucumber. So some more yellow and green. So just a whole beautiful array of colors is my kind of goal here. I've always wanted that with the trellis. So that would be like a little dream come true. I'm really excited to see it starting to form. And then we have some capsicums growing here. These are just red capsicums. I actually had grown from last year, so I saved the seed from one of them. And they're starting to grow strong. They have little tiny, looks like they're gonna flower soon, which I am very excited about. Oh, and they're already starting to flower. So I can expect fruit, some vegetables coming out of them soon. Now, next to these, I got some eggplants. The eggplants, which are looking really, really lovely. But we are having a problem with these ladybugs i think they're called 16 spotted ladybug and at the moment i'm just finding them and killing them because they are they are horrible and they they just munch away the leaves of eggplants zucchinis and your cucumber plants and i'm pretty sure i just spotted one just before so i will be getting rid of that too but they are absolutely horrible um make sure you just i just check my plants every single day because i love looking in my garden check your plants every single day grab them and just just kill them um, they are extremely destructive and they'll lay a bunch of eggs and then honestly you won't, you won't be able to save your plant once they start laying eggs in those hatch. It's just absolutely ridiculous. They grow like these little orange fuzzy babies, which, yeah, they're like spiky. Anyways, they're not fun. So when you see them, if you see them, they, have, they look like a ladybug, but they have a lot more spots, like little spots. Kill them. <laughs> they're very destructive. They're not good for your garden. Oh, dianthus. These are just some dianthuses, which I'm amazed they're still here, to be honest, as it's quite hot and normally they like the cooler weather. But those are there. And we've got some beautiful golden beetroots. It's just something new I'm trying. I'm really excited to see how they grow, if they even grow well, because it is kind of hot. But I wanted to give them a go. Got some dwarf be bush beans. 
which are starting to look really, really nice. And a, a random dill that grew on its own. And what I'm really excited about is these are strawberry spinach. So I will be trying to transplant soon. I normally can transplant pretty well with a high success rate. Um, so I might actually do another video on that on how to transplant to get like the highest success rate when you're moving seeds and things around. So I have a few of these and I really, really want to keep those plants. So a strawberry spinach, it grows quite tall. I've never grown it before. Just from pictures, it grows quite tall. You can eat the leaves, obviously, but it grows almost like little like raspberries. It looks like little raspberry fruits all along as well. The little red like fruits that you can eat. And I've heard that look nice and sweet too. So I just really excited to try them and give them a go. So I'm going to be transplanting those out into another spot over there that I have that's currently kind of empty. So I thought, ooh, that would be a perfect spot to put them in. I'll show you them soon. But I'll probably do another video on that. I'm just going to let them grow a little bit bigger so they're a little bit stronger first. Next to the strawberry spinach, I've got some golden gooseberries. So I have a few here. I have some more here and another one here. So I will be trying to transplant as well. And I've already got a spot allocated where I would like to try and move them if possible. More carrots as we can never have enough. Some rosellas, which I love to try and make jam out of. I made some jam last year out of these. And it was really, really good. So I've seen them before. Never really did it before. But no, rosella jam is just, it's like a fruity flavor sweet with the honey obviously kind of floral beautiful red color the pectin is in the seed itself so you already got the pectin there you don't need to buy any store-bought pectin it's really quite easy to make and it was really really good so i'm excited for that it's a summer plant so keep that in mind for summer next year i've got a few more carrots over here might fill in some of the gaps that are happening here more chard and then we've got okra some green okra which i think looks like it's just starting to produce as well some little buds and then I've also transplanted this one so I had a whole bunch growing this is a zinnia I believe I believe it's a zinnia it's a zinnia or a dahlia I got given those ones as seeds so over here in this kind of blank space I was gonna try and grow some basil I I put a bunch of seeds but they haven't seemed to have taken so I thought this would actually be a really really good spot as the strawberry spinach grows quite high, I'm going to grow the strawberry spinach here. And then I thought I'll try to transplant a couple of those gooseberries just along here. And that'll be really, really perfect for both of them to go here. Next to them, I got some blood onions growing. I had too many growing together, so I moved this one out. And it has taken. And this one, which I accidentally cut the top off. But it's been like five days now, and it's still there. So I'm thinking that it has taken, and it is alive. So those ones have stayed alive. That's great. I just hate the thought of having to kill a plant. Like when you plant the seed, it's gonna grow into food and the thought of just killing it makes me sad. So I try to transplant so at least even if out of 10, you know, I get five, well that's five more than what I would have had. If they're too close together, they obviously just won't grow to their full potential. I have me a runner, so she's gonna be in the video with us now. So I've got some more eggplants here and as you can see, there's been a bit of damage from those 16 spotted ladybugs, but whenever I find them, I just, I just kill them. And it does seem to be still going strong, so that's all right. We've got more golden beetroots, more red capsicums, and then I decided to just throw in some radishes. So I got some radishes growing just over here next to the capsicums. And more green okras. I've planted some flower seeds, so I'm waiting for those to go. Oh, actually, I think I see one little one just there popping up. I only planted them pretty recently, like not maybe even within a week. So hopefully they'll be growing. And that is another butter bush bean I have transplanted. And it has taken, which is great. I've got coriander, more chard from last year, and a beautiful, huge zucchini plant with some zucchinis. I've already harvested several from this plant. And in amongst it are the sunflowers. So these are giant Russian sunflowers. The idea actually was that the sunflowers would grow taller before the zucchini grew, but some of them took a little longer to take off and this zucchini plant just, just really, really grew quickly. So hopefully these little sunflowers will help to 
will still get strong. I want them to grow really big. It's my first time trying giant Russians and I want to see how big they will get. I'm not sure on the quality of the soil if it's the best if I didn't prepare it enough, but hopefully these will keep growing and get really, really big and I'll show you them when they are in bloom and hopefully they're really big. So it's really exciting to see. Now this is the latest garden bed my husband has made for me. So I only planted in this garden bed, let's say three weeks ago now. So not everything has popped up and I've actually reseeded some things because I'm just not sure if they were gonna grow or not. It's been so dry and hot even though I've been watering. But some of the things I have growing are some more zinnias. I've got the butter, butter dwarf bush beans growing here. That's these ones all along here and they seem to have taken really nicely. I transplanted two of those climbing purple beans as I didn't want to kill them. So they seem to have just taken two. I've only done that a few days ago. I've got some cherry tomatoes. I'll have to thin it out and only keep one of each as I want them to grow to the full potential. And here, while we don't really see many now, I planted greens in the hopes, there's one here, but in the hopes that I'll get some more greens growing. Here's another one there. So they haven't really started to grow. I reseeded this just the other day. And hopefully with the rain, they'll grow way better. I planted daikon radish here. Also, that's only been maybe a week. So hopefully those seeds will take and start to grow. And I got jicamas, something different that I wanted to try. But these are jicamas. So it's more like a root vegetable. So it takes a while, but then you get this beautiful root vegetable, which is kind of like a sweet kind of like a pear almost. So it's quite nice, and I've done it once before. I thought I'd try to give it another go. And then rockamelon. So I'm really excited to see that actually trellising up nicely. Got some rockamelons there, and some dahlias just over on this end. And we have a few random spots where we're growing things. So I've got watermelon here, which has seems to have really taken. I have to say we have had really poor success with watermelon, but this one's looking like it might grow well. And that sweet potato that I planted, but I just had it as a cover crop. It's getting kind of eaten a bit there. And then we have another area where we just, I just tried to throw some things. It's, I don't want to leave any space blank. And why not try and grow something if you can? And if it grows, great. And if it doesn't, well, it's nothing lost as you weren't really expecting to use that extra space anyway. So that's just down over here. This is gonna hopefully be our future. Um, we wanna plant tropical like trees in this area. So we're just preparing the garden beds and we're gonna have to let them sit for about a year before we can plant the trees in. So we got a few things growing just behind me here that I planted. So we have some nasturtiums, I had some more green okras, some more zucchini plants. As you can see along here, I just harvested from this one a few actually already. I've got some more rosellas. A few beetroots are growing and a radish. And I've also just recently planted a sweet potato only two days ago there. Because I thought that's actually really loose soil and it'd be really great to spread and let it grow. And just in the back here, we have some corn growing. These came from our corn cobs last year. My husband literally just planted the whole cob straight into the ground, and this is what happened. So I do think it came out pretty well, along with a bunch of potatoes at the bottom. I also just wanted to throw some seeds into the sand and see what happened. So this is sand. I threw a bunch of lettuce seeds, and they did take, along with some of the nasturtiums grew, the flowers grew. Surprisingly, the tomato grew in the sand. The radish did really well in the sand, but the zucchini that I had growing did not do well, so it does not like very sandy soil. So it was just an experiment, and I got to see what grew and what didn't grow in the sand. So I hope this video has inspired you to either get your summer garden started now, or to start thinking about your summer garden and what you want to plant. There are so many fun and exciting new things to try. I'm so excited about what is your favorite thing or most exciting thing to grow in the summer garden. I'm really excited about these mouse melons. I can't wait to see how they grow and I just love the sunflowers. They're so gorgeous. So those are my top two favorite. What is your favorite? I'd love to know in the comments below. Please like this video if you haven't already. It really goes a long way in helping my channel. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and I will see you guys again in the next video. Have a lovely day. Bye.